Now I'd like to invite our spiritual union leader to come forward, Joe, who has charged us through this whole process. Uh, he's been amazing. We've adopted him here because I can't get over his Irish accent. I've got to keep him here. You couldn't have a wake without an Irishman, could you? Like uh, Clay said, uh, we've got mixed emotions at the minute. I think a lot of us are uh, very proud of the stand that our students have made. They've really changed the perceptions in Auckland, in New Zealand, of what's considered a docile, silent, easily exploitable uh, minority to proud lions of India. So give a round of applause to our proud lions. And this just hasn't been through uh, the last two weeks of sanctuary. This has been an ongoing battle for seven months uh, for justice. And I know that uh, many people are tired and exhausted and emotionally stretched. And we also had, we lost someone on Wednesday. We lost Sujat, a uh, uh, special brother of mine. Uh, because he lived in Ireland for three years and he knew lots about Irish music and crack and, uh, <laughs> and he always wondered why he'd left <laughs> uh, to come here. But I would like to assure Sujat and all our people that we hope uh, to reunite them here in Aotearoa uh, very, very soon. And that is uh, what we're very hopeful about uh, uh, today. So let's just leave it at that. I'm a union negotiator. <laughs> And uh, negotiations are ongoing, and let's just have a message of hope today that there are going to be more changes in this case. I think the first victory that these uh, students established was the re-establishing of the medieval tradition of sanctuary, <laughs> that if you're up against uh, evil, that there is a place of safety, that there is a place of uh, spiritual protection, and I think we've established that now in New Zealand. So well done on your first victory, establishing sanctuary as a tradition here in Auckland. Um, but there are further changes that we hope to see uh, that other people will talk to, about, uh, talk to you about um, later. I just want to finish my piece before um, kind of being the chairperson. I just want to finish by saying that how I intersected with some of these students is the nexus of employment that we have a system here. This is systematic. It's systematic from start to finish the exploitation of Indian students as a commodity uh, to, to take cash from, to take value from. It's like the East India Tea Company, million, you know, hundreds of years ago, except now we're dealing with a human commodity that we can extract money from. That's stage one is the agents. And they're refusing to, to uh, register the agents, to regulate the agents, because they're in competition with other uh, Western economies like Canada and so forth. This is the fifth biggest business now in New Zealand, grossing at $5 billion. There are a lot of hands in the till. And I would wonder how far up the chain of command those hands go. And I know that there are certain journalists courageous journalists who are following the trail, and we will see in the next few weeks uh, where that lies. I'll leave that at that. But this is an uh, uh, um, exploitative nexus between education, immigration, and employment. Students who are reliant on a visa system are then exploited in the workplaces, and we all know about the masalas. We all know about the uh, exploitation, never mind minimum wage. I was uh, at a union meeting of security guards this morning uh, where there are gangs of 100%, of uh, one ethnic group only, i.e. Indian guards all over this city being exploited at night time, and I would argue for less than minimum wage. I've seen contracts where people don't have holidays, breaks, none of that, right? That's happening. 
And there are big companies benefiting from this. So we met some of the workers cleaning up the vomit and uh, the toilets in McDonald's at 2 a.m. Pradeep, where are you? Stand up, brother. <laughs> These are the workers who do the dirty work in Auckland uh, when people are out enjoying themselves on a Friday and Saturday night. Give Pradeep a round of applause. Brother Vikram, stand up. The other one. <laughs> Vikram still has his status here. Asha is his, his partner. She doesn't. So they're going to split this family in part. And their little daughter here on a tourist visa. I still don't know the answer to this one, actually. I still don't know the answer to what's going to happen here. But Vikram keeps you safe. Vikram is a security guard on minimum wage. And that's what's happening. We've created a pool of easily exploitable people in this city who can't speak up because they're worried about their immigration status. And when you can't speak up, or when you can't change your visa, or when you can't change your boss, like most of the rest of us can, then you're a slave. We have slavery here in this city. And it's not just at the Masalas, it's all over. It's endemic, it's systemic. And it needs to be changed. And we are going to change it. And that's what this has been about. The beginning of a new social movement of migrant workers to stand up in solidarity with religious people, with people from the different political parties, from people of the different cultural and ethnic movements. And I'd like to tell Tuku, uh, Tingi Ness, the greatest reggae musician ever from Aotearoa. <laughs> but we remember what happened here in Ponsonby in the 1970s when other migrant workers were surplus to requirement, when the Dawn Raids came through the doors and kicked out our Samoan and Tongan brothers and sisters. Now, we will not let this happen to our Indian and Chinese and other group brothers and sisters in the 21st century in this city. Indian workers are welcome here. Chinese workers are welcome here. And racism and exploitation has no room in our city.